Hello, we're going to be doing a simple introduction into using the new Leica ATS-600 in Spatial Analyzer. The ATS-600 is a new laser tracker with the unique ability to do both surface scans and reflectorless non-contact measurements. So to get started, we're going to go into our Instrument tab and add our instrument. I have it already in my instruments, but if you don't see it there, go to All Instruments under Laser Trackers under Leica and then select the Leica ATS-600 and add your instruments. That'll bring it into the graphics view. Then to connect, if you have connected before, you can just go ahead and select the connect button. If you do wanna check on your IP address, hit that drop down menu, laser trackers, select your instrument, hit okay. And that'll bring up the IP address. If this is the incorrect IP address, you can go ahead and select Discover IP, and that will populate the correct one for your laser tracker. To verify that they are talking, you can select Ping, and you'll see the replies from the IP address from your laser tracker. And go ahead and hit OK, and it'll start up the tracker and bring up the instrument interface. Here we have the trimmed down instrument interface, and this is what we recommend for new users who want a more simplistic view. You have your tooling options and measurement profiles. To get a full instrument interface, you can select this button here on the right, and that'll bring it in acting as a separate application, and then you lock it to this part of the graphics window using this button here. And here you still have the same naming options tooling and target options and measurement profiles. Then to go back to that trim down menu, the button is here down on the right. So right now we just have our instrument pointed at the wall and you can, so we have our tooling selected as just a retro surface. And here you can see the diameter is zero because there is no SMR tooling offset. And just to take a point, you can select the single point measurement. And there we go, we have our first point. For the other measurement profiles, we have our standard CAN ones, single point, stable point, and spatial scan, and then a tooling ball option. And then these four options can, are user defined in the customizable measurement profiles. We have our first one set up as an area scan cloud. And then the other three you can set to whatever you'd like and to set them you just right click on it and it'll give you the drop down menu for measurement modes and select which one whichever one you'd like and these are sticky so they'll persist whenever you reopen a new file and today we're going to work on some uh, surface scanning so to do so we can bring up the camera in our ATS to define the region that we'd like to scan and to do that we're going to go over to this drive beam option on the left hand side of our bar and select camera and this is going to bring up uh, what our tracker is looking at right now to define our scan region we're going to click this polygon up here to create a perimeter select add region and then you can drive this using the arrow keys on your keyboard if you want to bring it left or right up and down Today we're going to just take a quick scan of this little figure here. So I'm going to create my scan region just by left clicking using my mouse. Then when I have everything I want to boxed in, I can just right click to set my region. Then for the scan density, those preferences can be set here on the left. Using You can use the slide bars for each of these and work on spacing or you can also just type in the numbers you'd like. So let's go for 10 millimeter spacing. And then maybe bring our reference distance down a little bit. And you can get a estimated time for the scan in this upper right hand side. So right now we're looking at 17 seconds. That's pretty quick and that should work for what we want to do. So when we're done, this region will save. We'll just close out of that, close out of our keyboard drive ADM options, and select our measurement profile for the area scan cloud. And we can see in the graphics window, 
that it has started the scanning process. That white line is where it currently is. And the data is coming in blue, green, and red. This is a little bit different than the standard grayscale you might see and can offer a little bit more information. It's hard to tell right now, so let's adjust our uh, cloud visibility option. So you can do that with Control T because it all comes in as just one pixel per point. So we'll bring the make those points a little bit bigger to get a little bit better visibility on it. And again, to bring up this cloud display dialog box, I hit the quick keys control T. You can also get to it by going up to the clouds and surfaces tab. And it's right here in the middle under cloud editing. This cloud display control will bring up that same box. So right now we have some darker blues. This is really the part of it that we care about. The red and light blue in the background is just some background data that we can filter out. And to do that, we'll go over to our tree and right click on our scan stripe cloud and go down to RGB filtering. So here, let's say we want to get rid of these red points. Let's set a high threshold. So select that checkbox and then let's bring that down to 100. And see if that does it for us. Then set, select reset and apply filter. And there we go. We got rid of those red points. And this, these light blue ones in the background, let's try to clean that up as well. So we'll go to and select our high threshold on the blue category. Let's see if 150 will get rid of those for us. And it does. So that leaves us with the data that we care about in this instance. Again, that data is not gone. It's just hidden from the graphics views right now. So if we want to bring it back, we can just unselect those high thresholds and reset and apply filter. And we're right back where we started. But I think I do want to get rid of them for now. So we'll hide them again. And there we go. And then select exit. And there we have it. There is our intro to the using the ATS 600 with in spatial analyzer. Hopefully that helps everyone get started. And if you guys have any other questions, do not hesitate to contact us at support. All right. Thank you.